back in the barn again, still visiting my family. As you can tell, I'm obviously in the barn. This isn't my garage. But uh, I'm also sitting here on this Model C, the Concept 2 ERG, that I'm going to show you how to do some very simple basic setup and uh, how to take care of it and uh, a couple of really easy drills for those of you that may or may not have a ton of experience on the rowing machine, whether you're a total novice and have no idea what it is or you've been working on it for a while. Sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, doing the basics really, really well will help you be even better. But before I get started on those, I'm going to clean the machine and then I'm going to warm up and then I'm going to show you some simple drills. Now that I have the machine clean, the first thing I would do is set my drag factor, and then I think feet, seat, hands. Okay, so that's basic setup. You want to make sure that the load is proper and uh, is what you want and what you're used to, and then you also want to make sure that your feet are connected, your butt is connected, and your hands are connected before you even get going anywhere. As far as drag factor goes, this is a Model C ERG, and this computer is 20 years old, and it still works. The only thing I've had to do in the last 20 years of using this machine is change the batteries, if you can believe that. So the difference between a Model C and any of the models that most of you are probably familiar with, you might stare at this and be like, what the heck is that thing, uh, is the monitor is going to be the biggest thing. If I really wanted to, I could call up Concept2 and order a new monitor and order a new sensor in there if I really need, if my monitor broke. But uh, the reason I bring this up is because in the new monitors, all you have to do is Turn the machine on and either push display drag factor or more options display drag factor always check your drag in the monitor with these older machines it looks totally different uh, you actually have to push the ready and rest or the okay and the little the rest button on here i love it it's a bed <laughs> the image for rest 20 plus years ago was a bed <laughs> so you would simultaneously press rest and ready on this old machine but like I said on the new ones you would go into the monitor you would either hit more options display drag, display drag factor or display drag factor and all you do is take a couple of strokes and a number pops up on the screen under drag taking three, four, five, six, seven, whatever strokes, the number will pop up. Once the number stabilizes to be basically the same number, you would stop there and that's what your drag factor is. I'm a little over six feet tall, weigh just under 160 pounds now. I weighed between 165 and 175 pounds when I trained full time as an elite rower. Um, but I still to this day use drag factor right about 117 for my size, right? Uh, typically drag factors are recommended based on male-female differences, um, but really at the end of the day, what is the biggest male-female difference is our physical size. So bear in your physical size, your age, your training tenor, tenure, right? That's how long you've trained, you know, and how often you've trained, how trained you currently are. And bear in mind, if you are coming back from illness or injury or you've been in the off season, you've taken time away from the machine, um, you might go five to 10, whatever you want to, numbers, 10 lighter on your drag if you're just getting back into it for the first time in a good long while. So keep those things in mind. Typical ranges for women are between 110 and 120. But for men, 120 to 130. Lots of schools of thought have variances on that. Um, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that if this wheel, the flywheel here, slows down too much because the drag is super heavy, it makes it very heavy for you to pick up again. And rowing is not meant to be like a deadlift. It's not heavy, pick it up, put it down. Heavy, pick it up, put it down. It's get it up to speed and keep it going. That's how you can last for more than 30 to 60 seconds at a time on this thing. If you row along and you find that, say, uh, if you're a female of my size or smaller and you're at 115 and you feel that the, machine, that the wheel slows down a lot between strokes, try it a little bit lighter. Okay. If 
you're getting a lot of back fatigue, we'll work on technique because it's likely a big piece of technique that's causing back fatigue. Um, but that could also be a sign that the drag is a little bit too heavy. If you have specific questions about drag, feel free to leave a comment or find me on my website at lindsaydareshoop.com or lindsayshoop.com for that matter and ask. I'm happy to answer it um, to give you guys as much information as possible because one of my friends told me many years ago, more than a decade of coaching ago for me, um, was never be greedy with knowledge. So I have about 20 years of experience with this, the vast majority of which is competing at the elite level and now a decade of coaching at all levels, everyone from eighth graders to 80 year olds, Olympians and Paralympians in between, and lots of collegiate athletes, of course, as well, and lots of high school athletes as well, masters, everybody in there, uh, plus myself and my big bro, who you see wandering around in the background. But again, if you have questions, please ask. All right, give your drag factor a try, and then we'll move on from there.